Hello everybody. Today I'm doing a review on the Dell Studio 1535 laptop which goes for about $800. Now this laptop comes fully loaded with a nice little features. Um, it's very well constructed and I'm going to go in the next few minutes and show you the features that come with this laptop. It's a great little device. Um, I like it. It looks really neat. Uh, there are some little things I'm going to show you that maybe you might not like that I don't like either. But uh, one of the nicest things that I'm going to show you is um, on my blog on rmstech.com, you'll be able to download the drivers to downgrade this unit to Windows XP. And you know, to some people it might be a downgrade, to some people actually it's an upgrade. Uh, but it comes with Vista 64 bit uh, home premium. And uh, if, for those of you that want to have Windows XP 32 bit, this would actually work really good. Um, it has 4 gigs of RAM on the unit. But when you downgrade and put Windows XP on it, you're going to see about 3 point something gigs. So, uh, but you're still going to be able to use it really good. And uh, it runs super fast with Windows XP. The problem to, that I had was actually getting the drivers, uh, but I solved that for you. So just uh, check out the video. And at the end, remember to visit aramistech.com and check out the information for this laptop so you can download the drivers. I put them all in one zip file so you have them all there. Okay, the only one I'm missing is the Bluetooth driver for the laptop, but uh, the wireless LAN, the screen, you know, the uh, video card, and the, uh, all the other drivers on there are all included. So uh, take a look at that, and I appreciate you watching my videos. Thank you. Alrighty, so here we have the Dell Studio 1535, and as you can see here on the screen, I already have Windows XP on it, and this is Windows XP 32-bit. So for those of you that want to uh, put this type of version on it and remove the 64-bit uh, because of drivers and stuff like that that you might have, uh, and old programs or old software that you might have that doesn't run on the 64-bit, well then this is the opportunity that you can do it. Now just visit aramistech.com and I have all there the drivers to download it. So you basically can do this uh, installation and, and set it up. Uh, there are two things that you need to change in the BIOS on this thing in order to install Windows XP and I will show you uh, briefly after the video a little clip so stay tuned after it so I can show you what you need to turn off in the BIOS in order to install Windows XP on it. Um, basically uh, I want to show you the uh, laptop up here has a camera on board and it has the, the camera site right here and it has the two uh, microphones on each side of the camera so it's really neat that it has that function uh, basically you can record your videos on the go which is, makes it a lot better for you uh, if, you're, if you're into editing or if you want to chat with someone this is great to do that um, on the top here I want to show you real quick here on the top here it has a bunch of buttons that are sensitive to your finger so basically you pass your finger right over it and they light up and they turn off now these uh, right here control the media player basically you know stop and play and all that stuff and then here you can put the volume up or down on the on the speaker and also the last button here for example for those of you that bought this unit and maybe are having a hard time how do you take the CD out the CD comes right out of here just touch the last button here and it actually pops the CD right out uh, I'm gonna show you the next features in a few minutes uh, but let me first tell you a little bit about the keyboard. The keyboard has a really nice feel to it. Uh, when you're typing, it feels good, it's comfortable. Uh, also, the trackpad here, it's a little bit, um, since it's not that sunken in into the actual unit, it feels like you can actually just slide your finger off, and sometimes you will. So it's not that um, comfortable to use, at least not for me. But the buttons for the mouse respond really good. And overall, the unit is very nice. It's very sleek. It has a nice uh, finish to it, very shiny, and, and has some design to it, so it's really pretty. Uh, it looks really good, and it's, it looks very sturdy as well. Uh, first, I'm going to show you now on the side of the laptop, so you can see the features that it has here. And on this side here, I'm not sure what this button actually does, but it's an actual button. I believe it's a Bluetooth button uh, that it has on there. Uh, you guys might want to check it out before. I haven't actually looked at it you know, since I just got this laptop uh, the other day. So um, here is your wireless button, so you can actually turn the Wi-Fi on and off. Uh, right on this corner and then you have an HDMI connection here which you can use to actually plug in uh, your flat panel TV this is great if you're using something like Netflix where you can actually uh, watch the movies on the on the screen and just put the HDMI cable here and watch it on your uh, big screen uh, you also have here a VGA connection for your monitor 
uh, if you want to use an external monitor on this or if you want to connect it to a flat panel a lot of the flat panels have this connection in the back of it so you can actually run a cable directly to it you also have two USB ports here that are uh, USB 2.0 which is really neat on this side and you have a gigabyte LAN on this right here and you also have your sound card right here and then you have media a media card you can actually it has a little plastic in it but you can actually put your media card in here and it has the PCMCI uh, slot right here on the side here. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention about the wireless card is while it has one gigabyte LAN on the actual network card it has only uh, a G connection on the wireless so I expected an end draft connection but I guess uh, they didn't add that on there so definitely that's one of the things missing on this device uh, to truly make it a really nice uh, unit. Alrighty on the other side uh, we have here a firewire port uh, two USB ports also right here 2.0 which is nice because uh, a lot of the laptops only have one on one side here you have actually two so you have a total of four USB ports uh, you also have here your CD-ROM which is flush there's nothing it doesn't come out a tray doesn't come out or anything just that you push the CD in and it pops right out and also you have here the button for the power so this is how you turn this little device on um, it was at first I couldn't figure it out and it's actually in the corner so uh, you always have to look here but this is how you turn the device on uh, also when you close the lid on the unit okay it doesn't lock or anything so if you're looking at the laptop on the front of it there's no latch or anything it actually pops open directly here okay so that's basically how that works it has an infrared port in the front of the unit right here so you see it there so you can use the infrared port and uh, the one thing I want to mention was the battery which is one of the things I didn't like was if you look at the laptop right now the way it is when you put this on a desk it's really nice and comfortable because it stays in an angle because of the battery now the battery has this piece sticking out which you can see here okay and so when you put it on a desk it's very nice but if you're actually going to put this in a bag or you're going to actually take this on the go with you uh, you know when you hold it it's it basically becomes like a handle uh, it might be a good thing it might be a bad thing because it actually makes the laptop a lot bulkier this laptop is not that thick it's actually a really nice size if you look at it here and it doesn't weigh a lot it's very nice and, and it's uh, like I said very nice design uh, it feels very well constructed so I definitely believe they, they did a good job at, at building this unit I hope this uh, review helped you out and that basically you can now um, if you're looking to buy this unit but uh, you didn't want to have the 64-bit edition on it uh, definitely now you can put the drivers on it for 32-bit and get this with Windows XP on it so it is a really nice device I would definitely want to put links on the website so you can take a look at uh, places that sell this device uh, apart from Dell's website uh, you can get this on a Best Buy and they go for about $800 so it's a really neat device you might want to take a look at it if you're looking to get a nice laptop uh, for your home or office thank you I really appreciate you watching my videos and thank you for all your great comments that you've put on my past videos uh, that I've made for you Thank you, and thank you for watching. Okay, so we're now on the screen where we have the uh, setup, and uh, let me, uh, I'm going to move this around a little bit so I can uh, show you exactly where we need to go in order to get this uh, to work for you the way you want. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice on the menu here in the BIOS is you have several things that you can look at, and what we want to go down to is uh, on to... Um, there we're going to be onboard devices okay that's where you actually want to go uh, the one that's highlighted in green okay that's where you want to be now once you get there uh, you're going to go ahead and you're going to press one of the arrows so it drops down the menu and you're going to find that it has uh, several options and uh, let me get closer here so you can read in case uh, you need to see this and you need to do this on yours um, you're going to find it says integrated NIC external USB port uh, you're going to have the SATA, SATA operation and flash cache module. Well, we first need to turn off the flash cache module. Okay, so you're going to press um, enter on that, and it's going to actually take you to a screen in the center here where you see the button, and you're going to choose to um, turn it off. Okay, press enter, and it'll take you right back into the main um, option here. Well, now, now you're ready to turn off the SATA operation. So you pr go up to that one, press enter, and it's going to switch you off on the right to where it turns green here. And it's going to be set up right now at H AHCI. What you want to do is change it to ATA. So you're going to 
Press a little arrow till it switches to ATA. Press enter. And it's going to tell you that the SATA operation is being changed. Uh, would you like to continue? Put yes. Enter. And you're done. Okay. Now, once you once you did that, let me uh, go back here a second. I'm sorry. Let me uh, set it up. And okay. And so now, basically, you can escape and uh, save and exit. And you should be good to go.